Mario Balotelli, an African American pro soccer player, said this about racism. You can't delete racism because it's like a cigarette. You can't stop smoking if you don't want to, and you can't stop racism if people don't want to. This quote, I believe, represents racism in a nutshell because it is something that activists have given up their lives for, but yet it still exists today. All over the world, especially in the United States, many races are being stereotyped and put down by racial slurs, including African Americans, Muslims, and people like me, Indians. I have been called racial names many, many times by a lot of people, and I have entered this Rotary four-way contest to stand up to racism in the hope that it will be less prevalent in the future. I will apply the Rotary's effective four-way test to racial language and racial stereotypes. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concern? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And is it beneficial to all concern? Let's look at the first part. Is it the truth? A common stereotype toward Muslims is that they're all terrorists. That statement could not be more untruthful and hurtful. According to a study conducted by the University of North Carolina in 2014, since 9-11, Muslim-linked terrorism has claimed the lives of 37 Americans. 37, that is a big number. But when you consider that almost 190,000 Americans were murdered in that same time period due to non-Muslim-linked terrorism, that 37 becomes very minuscule. Also, according to the FBI, 94% of all terror-related attacks on the world are by non-Muslims. That's only 6%. We give Muslims such a hard time and put them down with these hurtful racial slurs because of only 6% of what they do. As you can see, these stats are both misleading and untruthful and cause us to, as I said before, put hurtful stereotypes down on Muslims. The second part, is it fair to all concern? Consider that you were born an African American man. Call racial slurs because of your background. Looked at differently because of the consequences of history. You show potential in the classroom, but you are put down by the stereotypes imposed on your race by the society. Is that fair to you or your family, or the millions of other African Americans in the world? No, it is not. Stereotypes that you may not be close to representing are pushed down on you because of your race and racial background. Unfair stereotypes can even cause death. John Crawford III, a Cincinnati man, was shot and killed in Dayton, Ohio on August 5, 2014 for shouldering a toy gun and pointing it at people. The 911 caller, a Caucasian man, reported Crawford to be pointing a gun, but he did not mention that it was a toy gun because according to police reports, it was a toy gun because of the orange barrel that signified it as a fake gun. And the sad part is when police arrived on the scene, they did not give Crawford any warning and fired two shots the second fatally killing him. This man lost his life for a common stereotype that African Americans with a gun are automatically assumed as dangerous. This man lost his life because of that stereotype. The funny part also is that Ohio is an open carry state. You are allowed to openly carry your firearms, and yet John Crawford still lost his life. Why did this man lose his life? Is it because of skin color, or is it because he was holding a toy gun, and that's apparently illegal, and it causes you to lose your life. Martin Luther King, this is a famous quote by Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream that one day my four little children will live in a country where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. If we apply that quote to this situation, John Crawford III was judged as a criminal by the color of his skin, but not by the content of his character, and therefore lost his life for that misjudgment. Is that fair to him or his family? No. Next, does racism build goodwill and better friendships? A personal anecdote I have to share to support my point is, racism does not build good, goodwill and better friendships because it broke my friendship. I had a friend, I met him in the third grade. He was a nice guy, but when we got to a certain age, he started hanging around with the wrong types of people. So if I fast forward, I'll fast forward to the eighth grade, it was the end of the school day. I was walking down the hallway to go out the main doors, and he pushed me over, and he said something so hurtful that I literally stood there and almost cried. 
it was hurtful and I could not think straight and when I got home I didn't talk to anyone I just came to my I just went to my room and just sat there I never talked with him again and a few weeks later I figured out that he moved and I was happy because that thing that he said to me carried with me for the rest of my life so let's look at the last part is it beneficial at all concern racism creates feuds among humans all humans and it tears apart society. My belief is that the only reason you should hate another human is because of their personality or the way they act, not by their skin color, which is a physical appearance given to them by God. When you say race, when you say something racist to someone, does it make you feel better? It might make you feel better for that tiny second you said it to, and then once you turn around and start walking away, you automatically have a sense of guilt, and you feel sad for what you've done. In conclusion, racism is something that will never go away. It is something that is the consequence of history. And I'm just trying to make it less prevalent in the future. And the steps that I have taken is I have eradicated all racial slurs from my vocabulary since that day in eighth grade. And I hope that my actions will encourage others to do the same. And I want to make the world a better place with my actions and with the help of your actions as well.